Smile. Smile, darn ya, smile. You know this old world is a great world after all. Those are the lyrics that introduce us to Toontown, the technicolor haven for tunes in Robert Zemeckis' memorable Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The film is revered as a brilliant technical feat, blending live action and 2D animation in Detective Eddie Valiant's quest to clear the name of toon celebrity Roger Rabbit after he's famously framed for the murder of a high-profile executive. For most of the film, Toontown is a neighborhood mentioned in passing, often derisively. We see glimpses or hear stories, but it isn't until this moment that we get to see the place in all of its glory. I mean, I think it's so funny because uh, I love that movie as a kid and continue to appreciate it as an adult, but I think especially after making this movie and going into the deep dive of, of all the things that were in play uh, as, a, as I wrote a story about New York City, uh, I think I saw so many parallels. Joining us to talk about it is director A.V. Rockwell, whose deeply vulnerable debut feature, 1001, took home the coveted grand jury prize at this year's Sundance Film Festival. At first glance, an animated caper is wildly different from a character-driven drama about race and poverty in New York. But Rockwell spoke to us about her love of Roger Rabbit, especially as it exemplifies the necessity of building and protecting community. And so the scene that I, I chose to talk about was uh, when we go into Toontown. Um, and obviously, I think I was drawn to it always because I just love just seeing worlds uh, and the vitality of different communities. Uh, and obviously, this was a, a, an imaginative community, and so I was ex excited to visit it and just see what, what the culture was like there. What A.V. describes is the moment Detective Valiant reluctantly returns to Toontown for the first time in ages. We are swallowed by a set of red curtains, thrust into a world of vivid theatricality, Toons sing their welcome to Valiant, encouraging him, basically, to embrace the bright side of life, even if things are looking pretty bad. It's wacky, it's endearing, it's nostalgic. But as the song concludes, we see Toontown not just as a topsy-turvy world of entertainment. It's a living, breathing community. <laughs> To me, Toontown was in many ways Harlem and what they were fighting for in the movie was protecting what was special about those characters that was there, in this case, those people that live in this community and what makes that community special. In Who Framed Roger Rabbit, they wanted to, to drive a, a highway. They wanted to, 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 to knock it down for this, for, to create a highway. And so it's like when you imagine what it'd been like to turn something that just had so much spark and vitality to it into dust and rubble and then pave it over just for cars, it just kind of felt like, is it really worth it? Eight lanes of shimmering cement running from here to Pasadena. I saw it when I was a kid. I loved it when I was a kid. And I think uh, re-watching it, it's so interesting that it's so clearly about community displacement, but that's not how I think it often gets remembered. And I think so much of that is actually a part of the history of New York. Um, there's so many examples of it. I mean, Soho is, 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 a, is an LES, Lower East Side, our neighborhoods that were almost <laughs> gonna be knocked down um, for, for highways. And of course we see what they've become now, but in the case of Harlem and the ways that Harlem is, is something that's, a, and also an icon of New York and the ways that I wanted to protect it. It's like protecting what's sacred about the neighborhood and protecting what's sacred about, about the community 
that has developed here uh, over time. And so, uh, so it was really fun for me to look at that, that movie through a new lens. There's the song that they sing in the beginning and some of the, the lyrics are really, I think, revealing. And I, I really thought that was so fascinating because you it's like juxtaposing all of this color and this life and this joy with the sense that like it's it's a choice to be joyful against people who are very ready and very willing to destroy what you've built yeah yeah it's again seeing toontown which is narrated as this like wacky place with its real issues and um I think it, it's a place that has to really protect itself. And I think that's that's what really struck me about your film is it's about having to protect, protect yourself because the system necessarily won't. And the system often is who you have to protect yourself against. Both movies are, are about that, protecting communities uh, who are at risk of being displaced. And it's interesting because even when I remember when he first, uh, when the main character first crashes into to Toontown and, and it almost, when you look at just the intersection of what's happening and you, you hear the sirens and you see the people crossing the street and the buildings who are all animated characters themselves. Uh, but it's, it, it looked like a slum, it definitely looks like a slum and, and I think if you know anything about the history of a, of a lot of cities especially New York and what Robert Moses even meant to New York uh, I was like is this movie about him is this movie about the same things that my movie is about uh, so I, I, I love that it, I have built this new layer to my relationship with one of my favorite films was there anything about like the animation specifically that that drew you in like any technical aspect of that scene that really... I mean, I think the whole movie is such a beautiful technical achievement. Uh, and just, uh, I think, the, even the choreography of, of certain scenes and how it plays out in that film. And even just the way uh, the main character is just like falling through the air, that you see all these cameos. And you just a reminder about characters and, and people. Um, and you have to imagine what it means of this, if this town is under threat, um, what it means to take that away. You're seeing the masterful technical achievements, but but I love that at the end of the day, it was there to communicate a much bigger idea uh, about the world around us. It's seeing the familiar characters against, w coupled with these new characters that give you a sense of like life, like you're watching people who live their days every day, they go to work, even if their work is, you know, making little fun cartoons for us. It's like this reminder that these communities are everywhere and people are able to build a community anywhere. I really love sort of watching Who Framed Roger Rabbit against 1001 and, and really seeing how unexpectedly they they mess, mesh and they have they have this message so I think that movie itself is such a gem but I think this added layer is definitely as you said it's something that gets lost in how people look at that movie uh, when they when they think back to what was so great about it I think it did have a very stunning and beautiful message in that way and it definitely parallels to the very different but very similar movie that I've created now so I hope people go check it out <laughs> so they can get a better sense of what we're talking about uh, when we when we speak to the things that are similar in both movies, but also are important to say about life and about the, the communities that we live in. Just let me see your eyes so I know you're not mad at me. I'm staying out of trouble this time. Rockwell is right. Maybe we don't always think of it this way, but we all live in communities. We build them every day. Friends, family, coworkers, your neighbors, your acquaintances, the guy in your apartment complex who plays his music a little too loud. These are two films about that spark of recognition and familiarity. That feeling of, hey, I know you, we're in this together. And if they teach us anything, it's the importance of keeping each other safe. I see somebody who needed me.